Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. Looking forward to a good time together. We've got a couple of great guests coming up in a few moments. But there's a lot in the news today. Okay. Um, you know, here's one. We're just going to jump straight into entertainment to, okay. uh, to start today. The uh, gentleman by the name of James Holzhauer, who had the uh, amazing run on Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. His run came to a close yesterday okay. as he was... Oh, he lost. I wish I'd seen it. I I was watching it earlier, well, last week sometime, and I was like, man, that guy is aggressive in the strategy that he had that I noticed was taking out all the high numbers first mm -hmm. of every subject. He's just like shooting them, shooting them down. So yep. I would have loved to have seen that episode with Well, a uh, user yesterday. experience librarian, uh, Emma <laughs> oh, Bocher, I'm not sure if that's how you say her last name, she beat him. And uh, the, the weird thing they huh. said was at the end, he did not make a big bet. He was known for making big wagers, mm -hmm. you know, to, but she was ahead and he couldn't catch her and he was just guarding against the person in third. Oh, okay. Had to hope that she missed the final Jeopardy. But so he had right. 23,400 going into final Jeopardy and... Um, and he couldn't catch her. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So nonetheless... That's impressive. I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, he still had a, a total uh, win of... Two million four hundred and sixty-four thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars. Wow! Not okay. a bad haul. <laughs> Someone told us he had been on another uh, game show. Yeah, I think somebody said that, um, but I don't know what it yeah, was. Yeah, that I was can't like remember. we were talking about that last week. This guy, what did he do? He was a. He's like a professional gambler. I believe. Smart dude. Yeah. And young. Yeah. No. Great. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Mm. All right, now I'm going to get to one that I, I want to talk about okay. a little bit today. Um, over the weekend, President Trump went to a uh, church service, and the pastor uh, in Virginia, this is in the northern Virginia area, mm -hmm. uh, prayed for him. He called him onto the stage, he and he prayed the for church? him for about okay. two and a half minutes. Uh, David Platt, uh, who is the McClellan Bible Church McLean. pastor. Mm -hmm. um, so so there's, people are saying, well, People in his church were hurt, and he's concerned that they were hurt about this. Now, the pastor never made the decision to pray for the pastor, right? At all. That he made the decision to pray for the pastor. To uh -huh. the president. Okay. To pray, pray for the president. He's never apologized for that, and he and he cites why it is important for us to always pray for those in authority and leadership. Mm -hmm. The thing that That's bothers biblical. me, yes, yes it is. is the fact that people are. A bothered and hurt that we should pray for someone that they disagree with politically. I believe you should pray for all people in authority. Mm -hmm. you know, regardless of their party affiliation, you should be praying for them. Mm -hmm. And if you're hurt by that, mm -hmm. sounds to me like you're really not reading what the Bible says, which says to pray for those in authority. Now, let's take this back biblically. When the scripture was written, guess who was in charge? Nero. Wow. So pray for those in authority? People like Nero? That's mm -hmm. what scripture is saying. Don't tell me that we have politicians who measure up to, mm -hmm. to the debase level of Nero. Mm -hmm. Come on now. So why is anybody offended or hurt by that? That To me, that is showing a high level of spiritual, mm -hmm. sadly, biblical ignorance. Uh -huh. And also spiritual immaturity that people only want to pray for people they like. Now, here's the next thing. Yes. Jesus talks about the, the importance of us not just praying for those that we like. Right. But for those that we don't like. Right? Yep. Scripture talks about that. So, 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 uh, but I tell you, Matthew 5.44 says, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Mm -hmm. There it is. If we pray, if we only pray for those that we like, we're not You're no better much than better than they anybody are. Anybody else? Because it's easy to pray for the people that you get along with. It's easy to do that. It's harder to pray for those who, who you do not agree with. But it's so very important because the Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it as he would a watercourse. God is the only one that can do those things behind the scenes that can touch the hearts of man, touch the hearts of our, touch the heart of our president, touch the heart of those in leadership. God is the one that does that. God doesn't slumber. He does not sleep. He's awake all the time. He knows what's going on in everyone's life. He knows how to get to the root of whatever the situation is you and know, change it. You know, what, what really bothers me is that when people in the past, churches, have 
honored presidents and candidates. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those candidates and those presidential uh, people in the, in the presidency have backed principles that were completely unbiblical. And, and I'll, I'll be real, be straightforward, call, call, it, call one out that's easy. A lot of times people have backed abortion, which is completely mm -hmm. anti-biblical. It is the murder of the unborn. Look for it in the Ten Commandments, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's about as, as easy of one to find. But you don't hear people, I'm hurt because somebody prayed for them. Mm. So why are we hurt, some, when a politician that, oh, well, I'm not sure I agree with all of the things that they've uh, done or all of their policies, uh, so I don't want to pray for them. I'm sorry, you've got a problem. You have got a spiritual problem mm -hmm. because that does not line up with Scripture. Well, the, and the pastor said, I don't want this just to be a one-day occasion. Here at this church, we want to pray for our leadership every day. Yes. Not just because he's walked into this building, and I appreciate that, and I respect Absolutely. that, because he is doing exactly what the Bible tells us to do, which is one thing that we do at Evangel. We're praying for our leadership. You may not agree with your leadership. All the more important reason for you to pray for them lift them before the lord and let right. the lord do his work right yes going in a new direction the folks at southwest airlines have announced a three-day sale kicking off 49 dollar fares one way okay. conceivable that you could go both ways from certain destinations what? round trip for under a hundred bucks what yeah. southwest uh -huh. where can you go well, many, many places. There are, uh, now these are for travel dates between August the 20th and December the 18th. Ooh. It does exclude Labor Day. It's also not including Thanksgiving, okay? Oh, yeah. So, those you are, know, those that's dates the are going to be. travel day, I believe. Yeah. They're going to be out. Mm -hmm. But um, if you had a late summer, or it's designed to fill in for when people have gone, you know, they're not really traveling for summer vacations yeah. as much and to fill some empty seats. Why that's, not? A, that's really good because. The flights are so expensive. Have they you can. noticed how expensive the flights are? Even like when we send our daughter to school, if we ever do that, most of the time she drives because it's so expensive to even for her to fly. Even one way is more than no, that. No, it's, it's yeah. a lot of money. So not all cities are included. So I would, would say that um, sometimes nonstop flights um, are required in many cases. Mm -hmm. But man, I'd rather have a nonstop flight anyway. Yes. <laughs> yes. To, wants to have a layover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were talking to some family who had uh, flown in yesterday, mm -hmm. and they had had a layover. A three a three hour One layover, I believe in. I believe it was in Dallas. Yeah. So they talked about that. Mm -hmm. Just it makes your day a lot longer when you have layovers. International flights are limited to Tuesdays and Wednesday travel, mm -hmm. and some of the places mm -hmm. like high uh, vacation areas like uh, Las Vegas or Florida. I think it was Monday through Wednesday travel. Oh, well, anyway, hmm. kind of neat to know that there's some cost-saving mechanisms out there. Hmm. <laughs> did you hear this one about IHOP? IHOP has a new big IHOP pancake burger. No, did you I hear did that? Not. Okay, Tell this me about does it. not look that appetizing. It is okay. So it's a bun. The bun you have two sausages in the and you have bacon and cheese, and in the center you have a little pancake. Ooh, sounds a little bit. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of a burger place here in town. I won't mention it, but they always have funny names to their burgers, and I always look at them thinking, Ugh, that looks like a stomach ache. But this is a IHOP pancake burger. Mm. Well, you know, uh, now, know. now I, do you like pancakes? Yes, I know you like them more than I do, but I like, it depends, depends, because, okay, there's a pumpkin pancake that I do, delish. <laughs> Pumpkin pancake. So good. And then the regular pancakes that I add a little extra stuff to to make it a little more flavorful, and they are very good. You love them. I like pancakes. You, you like them when they taste like cakes. That's what he likes. So he likes the big fluffy ones that taste like a cake pretty much, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fluffier the better. I like waffles too, and I also like French toast. See, I don't. I don't. You don't like French toast? Uh -uh. It has to be a certain, it cannot be wet and a lot of times oh, it's too wet no, and no, I don't like no. that at all. It has like to be soft but kind of crispy on the on the edges. So we got to work on that. I'd have to. Yeah, because I have you noticed I've never made I've French never toast. ever made French toast. No, that's not true. I made it one time. And I think I even did it on the cooking segment. All right. Once. All right. Yeah. Okay, those of you who have not joined with us on the mailing to list, you need to do so. Make sure to give us a call at 505 884 8355 
and dial extension 101. Tell the person who's answering, hey, I'd like to be on the mailing list. You can get updates about programming. A lot of great things happening here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Between segments, there, Ruth was talking to uh, <laughs> us about the fact that she used to work at McDonald's. McDonald's. That was so my were, first job. You had some a little bit of. It was uh, great. Was it? Did it you was, like that job? I did. Hey, it got me through high school. So we Good. used to have competitions. Okay. We have time. We don't have time for this anyway. Just tell us. We want to know. We used to have competitions, and they had somebody who was the quickest could serve the most customers with accuracy during the day and one okay. at night. Okay. My sister reigned in the day, and I reigned. I reigned the night oh, shift. Oh my so goodness. We were, we were, it was awesome. You I really were enjoyed McDonald's. The McDonald's Had cashier queen. In the evening. In the evening. Mm -hmm. evening PM. Queen. All right. Well, we want to encourage you to uh, stay faithful in your giving to Alpha Omega Broadcasting. You know, we don't always talk about this, but the way that we maintain the equipment and maintain uh, upgrades here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting is really through your donations. And when you support the President's Club at $50, $75, or $100 a month, it makes a tremendous difference. Yes. It really makes a difference between whether or not we can do things well or whether we are struggling to be able to uh, do the type of maintenance and uh, upgrades that need to happen. Right now, we are in the process of uh, the digital repack, mm -hmm. and that is moving several channels, not just our uh, one of our channels. KTVS is going to be moving frequencies and because of that there's new antenna and transmitter work and all sorts of things tens of thousands of dollars of work being done your support of alpha omega broadcasting through the president's club is what helps us how can folks get well there are different ways to stay connected with us of course visit us online at kazq32.org there's a safe place for you to give online you can call into the station 505-884-8355 extension 101 or simply mail in that donation your money order, your prayer request, we pray over those, 24501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. God bless you for all you do. Please have with us today two wonderful gentlemen who are going to be talking to us about uniting our city to serve. And uh, we're glad to have with us today Brian Allred. Many of you know Pastor Brian. Thank and you. also Matt Moffitt. And Matt, this is, I think, the first time we've had you on Spectrum. Thank you for joining us. I'm happy hey. to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. Yeah. Brian, I guess we'll start off today uh, by yeah. talking about the, the importance of this Love Week. How did it originate? Where did it come from? What's yeah. it all about? So, you know, about 20 years ago, my pastor, Jack Hayford, did this thing called Love LA. And they were able to get 2,000 churches together to love the city of LA. And that had always been in my heart for a long time to say, man, what would happen if we got churches together? Presbyterian churches, Assembly of God churches, Baptist churches, Calvary churches, Catholic sure. churches. And we all came together uh, for a week to just say, you know, we're going to love our city like it's never been loved. We're going to serve our city like it's never been served. There's a lot of serving opportunities through the year. And uh, so, yeah, our New Mexico Praise Board, uh, Pastor Nate Heisick at Calvary, we were talking about a year ago, and we said, what if, instead of a day, what if we did a whole week? And we asked the city, what do you need? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we're, we're in our silo, we're in our faith community silo, and we think we know what the city needs, and we end up doing something that nobody wanted and nobody appreciates, and then we wonder why they don't like what we did. And so we just said, what if we took the posture and the attitude, what does the city need? And we go to the mayor, and we go to the city council, and we go to the parks director and we say, how can we serve? What can the church do uh, to serve the city, to be the b biggest blessing that we could possibly be? And so we, we started with this vision of Love ABQ, of uniting our city to serve our city. So mm -hmm. it'll be this year, June 15th, 22nd, hoping to mobilize over 1,000 volunteers to, to serve. And so we've done Convoy Hope. We had 1,600 volunteers right. in a single day. But and this and was, that was a great success. About, that was a huge success. 
But this was, what if we did it for a whole week? Because mm -hmm. on a Saturday, not everybody could be there. You were out of town or you were working. So we said, what if we gave a whole week to just love our city, to say to the city, he, we're here. This is Jeremiah 29, 7. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you. So we're just saying, Lord, we want to want to see our city prosper. We want to see peace in our city. We want to be a blessing to the schools. We want to be a blessing, a blessing to our police department. We want to be a blessing to parks. And so the city has the senior games happening the very same time. We didn't know that a year ago when we worked on our dates. Uh, but so they've asked us to serve. So we're doing uh, pit stop for moms. We're serving at schools. APS is opening schools. They're closed, but they said, we'll open it for you. Uh, so we're going to be serving at schools. We're going to be uh, when you say serving, serving at convention. schools, what does that mean? So they'll open it up to come in and clean and do a lot of the summer deep cleaning. So for schools, the, their busiest time for custodial staff is summer. And oh, okay. uh, is getting the, the school ready for for the fall. So they're oh, going to okay. open schools. So we'll go and serve in schools. We're uh, a lot of different projects. So one of the big needs is the city said, we'll give you a convention center. We saw what you did for Convoy Hope. We trust what, what you do at the convention center. What if we gave you the whole convention center from Monday, June 17th and to this Friday? And for the senior game. For the senior game. So all the activities that happen there, uh, we'll have volunteers there. We'll wear our Love ABQ shirts. Where are you going to get those? Where, I mean, the last time around, there was like a big rally, right? And people kind yeah. of, that were going to plug in, yeah. kind of got their shirts and their instructions. Do you have a rally yeah. this time around? So we do. So it's going to be Thursday night, mm -hmm. June 13th, 6.30 p.m. at Civic Plaza. Okay. So we'll have live music music and some games for the family and some fun about an hour so 6 30 to 7 30 come on down to civic plaza uh, park right underneath civic plaza get your t-shirt uh, get your instructions figure out when and where you want to serve and so we're encouraging families to come serve as a family come with your small group come with your church come with your business come with your team and if you're a coach bring your team and uh, so kids can serve ages 10 and older serve with their parents or a guardian and so come, bring your family. And so for me, with my kids seeing, you know, when they serve and they get involved. So my kids still remember Convoy of Hope last year. They remember oh. serving. They remember That's giving good. away food. They remember All the putting things shoes they, on. They were so. in, in, involved with. Yeah. Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself since this is your first time to, to be with us. And tell us how you kind of are plugging in with uh, this exciting week of, of loving and serving the city of Albuquerque. Sure. My wife and I are new to Albuquerque. We All moved right. here about a year ago from Southern California. It was time to depart California and to, to establish new roots. And we actually Googled top 10 places to live, thinking we could go to Boise, we could go to Colorado. New Mexico was not on our radar at that point. Okay. Well, number seven on that Google list was Albuquerque. And we said, gosh, we've never been there. Let's go try it. And so we packed up and we moved here to Albuquerque almost exactly a year ago. And I think one of the things that a lot of folks miss out on Albuquerque, our cost of living here is, is excellent compared yeah. to many places. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the things that attracted us. But as we arrived and we saw the Sandia Mountains. So well, that's a big benefit. Right? Oh, my <laughs> lands. We had been yeah. in southern Texas, which is flat. Sure. And so we missed the mountains and uh, coming from California. So we, we landed here just about a year ago. And began to engage in ministry at Calvary and uh, to get involved there. And, and that opened the door for me to go on staff as their community liaison. And so as a community liaison, I get to partner with Brian and New Mexico Praise and, and Convoy of Hope, Feed New Mexico Kids. Those are kind of some of the projects that I do. And then there was this little project called <laughs> Love Week. Yeah, and uh, so we little. <laughs> we right. began working on that in December and putting a pen to paper and making a plan and, and trying to uh, work with the city to come up with projects. Well, let's be specific if we could, Matt. Tell us some of this, the things that people can do. You mentioned cleaning, helping clean schools, convention center. You know, what does convention center mean? I mean, you know, we're sure. man the convention center. Is everybody <laughs> going to stand around and wave and say hi? Doubt it. But what, what are they going to be sure. doing when they get At there? the convention center, there are four of the competitions that are going on for the senior game. So there's badminton. Okay. There is volleyball. There is shuffleboard. Mm. And there is table tennis. And the volunteers there will work as host and bringing water to the competitors connecting with the competitors, keeping score at the different events, helping to present awards to, to the, those who win in the event. So for those five days, we'll be manning all of the volunteer posts for those four competitions. 
Wow. Yeah, so it's so quite a, a lot of work. It is a lot of work. There's a lot of athletes coming into town. I think the last number I heard is 13,000 athletes coming into town. And we get to host them as the city of Albuquerque. Now, as people are, are listening and thinking, oh, wow, this sounds like something that would be, you know, it, it may not be a once in a lifetime event, but maybe once, uh, fairly rarely, that it's going to come to Senior Games to Albuquerque. Um, how many people did you say again that you needed at, at the convention center? I think initially it was 650 to 700 to, to staff all of those volunteer positions yeah. at the convention center. How long are those volunteer slots? Are four they hours. Day? Oh, four, four to four. Hours. Yeah, starts at eight. Some of them start at 7:30. There's some setup on the first day. Sure. Uh, there's some tear down on the final day, but most of it is just hanging out, watching some great comp competitions and being engaged with those people who have come, not just from the U.S., but there's competitors from all over the world. Right. So, you know, it, 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 in some ways it's kind of like the, uh, kind of like an Olympics kind of it concept. Is. It's very you know? much so. It and is. Uh, the people who are engaged in this are pretty serious. I, I keep running into people who tell, <laughs> tell me, you know, I'm, I'm qualified for the senior yeah. games. And I'm like, okay, wow. You know, I, I mean, they're, they're really connected to, big to their sport yeah. and to their yeah. staying fit and <laughs> all of the different things that go with that. Now, there's a, another exciting thing that kind of goes with this. This is Freedom Celebration. Uh, but tell us, what is Freedom Celebration? What does that mean? How does it tie into this? Matt, yeah. share some details. Let, let me, can I back up just a little bit back to Love Week? Because I, yeah, we've talked right. a lot Go about the it. senior games. Absolutely. But we didn't talk about the fact that we're going into the schools and what the schools has asked, has asked of us is to help organize libraries, help mm. to tear down an old classroom and convert it into a science lab, uh, doing some deep cleaning, doing some cleaning out in front of the schools, pulling weeds. They don't have the, the janitorial staff that they used to have because of budget cuts. And so when I talked to the principals who uh, were setting up those projects, they were so excited to have I'm us sure. be a part of that. I'm sure. Then I met with the volunteer director from the city parks. And so we've identified 10 city parks that are in desperate need of, of beautification and painting mm -hmm. and cleaning up. And so we're doing the parks. We're doing New Mexico ramps. I don't know if you've ever engaged with anybody from New Mexico ramps, but they, along with the city, go out and build handicapped ramps mm -hmm. for those who are housebound and don't have the resources to build a ramp. And so we're working with them. And we're well, working before, with Holly Slade. There are a lot, a lot of things kids. happening, but we're almost out of time. So give us a little bit of information. So that ties in, that yeah. ties into to Freedom Celebration. And Freedom Celebration is an opportunity to do just that, to celebrate what we did during the week with the Good. city. And so we're inviting all of those people who volunteered to come on that Friday and Saturday night, the 21st and 22nd, to Isotopes uh, Park. Okay. And to celebrate with us, wear their shirts. We're going to have them stand up as a part of the, the service, uh, be recognized. We'll have a video of in. what we did. That's great. Yeah. Well, folks, sounds like a way that you can get involved in helping the city of Albuquerque. Our guests today, Brian Allred and Matt Moffitt. And I hope that you will find out the information at the bottom of the screen and get plugged in. As we end our time together today, Ruth, I, we're going to go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, but instead of just talking about a, a biblical principle, we're going to not only talk about it, we're going to put it into practice. So let's, let's jump straight to the passage today. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and those in authority, that we may live peaceable and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, right now, I believe we should just stop and pray for those who are in authority. Today's program has dealt with participation and helping uh, our city, loving our city. And, one, and we've talked about in the news, praying for our leaders. So let's do it. Let's just do it right now. Would you join with me in praying today? 
Heavenly Father, we come to you today in accordance with your word, and we ask that you would minister your wisdom, your guidance, and Lord God, your peace and upon those who are in positions of responsibility and, and leadership. We pray for President Trump and for Vice President Pence. I pray for our Jesus. governor, for Jesus. Governor Michelle uh, Lujan Grisham, that you would minister to her Jesus. today. I pray for our lieutenant governor today, that you would minister in his life this yes. day. Lord, we ask that you would cover Mayor Keller with your wisdom and your guidance as he leads the city yes. of Albuquerque, where I live, yes. that God, you would guide him. Pray for our city councilors, that, Father, you would give direction and guidance. Lord, for those who are in positions of elected office yes. for the U.S. Senate, I pray for Senator Heinrich and Senator Udall today, that you would guide these individuals and that you would help these men to make right decisions in accordance with godliness, with yes. accordance with your word. Yes. Lord, I pray today that you would minister to those who are in positions of, of, of authority at at the congressional level. Yes, pray for Associate Torres Small, Lord, that you would guide yes. her. For uh, Ben Ray Lujan, that yes. you would guide him. Yes. And Lord, you would minister right here in, in the first district, Lord, and that you would, would guide our newly elected uh, Congresswoman, that, that you would help her today, and that she would, Jesus Father God, Lord. have the wisdom of God as yes. she represents the, this community. Yes. Lord, I, I pray today that you would minister in our courts from yes. the Supreme Court all the way down Jesus. to the Metropolitan Court. And that, Father, those who are in positions of responsibility would be guided by the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And, Lord, at times, maybe they don't even know the reason why they're making the decision, but help them to make the decisions that would, Father, bring glory and honor to you and lead our nation to righteousness. We thank you for it today. And Lord, I pray that you would keep these people on our hearts and that we can lift them up in Jesus' name. Thank you for being with us on Spectrum today. It's so important that we pray for those in authority. Have a blessed day.